Okay, we're rolling. All right, this is an interview at the Buffalo and Erie County Historical Society, Nottingham Terrace, Buffalo, New York, 23rd of August, 2006, approximately 2.30 p.m. Interviewers are Mike Russert and Wayne Clark. Could you give me your full name, please? Eleanor Kynkofer. Okay. Um, this is an unusual interview. You're doing an interview, third-person interview of a soldier that you maintain correspondence with during World War II. That's correct. Okay. Um, how old were you at the time that you were writing these letters? Maybe 10, 11, mm -hmm. 12. Right? Okay. How did you end up writing letters to this soldier from Leroy, New York, which is outside of Rochester? At, uh, at school, at St. Agnes School in Buffalo, we had an opportunity to what they call adopt a soldier. And uh, we, I'm not sure how the names were selected or where they came from, but it came from the Red Cross through the school. And uh, I picked the name, or was given the name of Frank Brown. Okay. Um, what did you know about Frank Brown? Initially, nothing other than his address, his, um, and that he was from uh, Levi. Okay. Uh, from information prepared by his brother, younger brother, William Brown. Um, Frank Brown was born May 27, 1917, in Leroy, New York. He was a graduate of a vocational school there and entered the U.S. Army on May 15, 1941. Okay. Um, how many letters did you exchange with him? Um, over a period of time, Probably 20. Okay. Now, do you still have these letters? I do. Okay. Um, what did you two write about most of your letters? Well, basically, he would tell me what, uh, initially, what about his family and himself. And uh, I just, my letters to him are no longer around, so I suspect I just told him what I was doing in school or Girl Scouts or my, about my family. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, when did you start writing to him? Not sure. Okay. okay. Um, probably, I would imagine, yeah. after the war started, he went in... I would think about 1941 or 42. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, Well, he sent me some photographs of himself. If you yeah. Hold these up a little. Oh, I can hold them. If you mm -hmm. hold them right there, Wayne can focus on them. Okay, and you can explain uh, where they were taken. I'm going to focus in on the bottom one first. Okay, the bottom one I know was taken, according to his letter, was taken outside of his barracks in uh, Camp Gordon, Georgia. And he uh, inscribed it to a good soldier from the old Sarge. And that was down in 43. Okay. And then the photograph up top, which is a little bit dark. It is. Yeah. And that was taken by a professional photography also in Augusta. Okay. Okay. Okay, from the information, he was a staff sergeant in Company C, 12th Inf Infantry, um, motorized with the 4th Division. Um, do you know what kind of assignments he had, what he did at all? Did he tell you in his letters? He did, and it had mostly to do with uh, weapon training and that. Now, he enlisted prior to Pearl Harbor in May of 1941. Um, I guess uh, from reading this that his brother did, uh, he had a couple close friends. Uh, there's a photograph here of him with his... There is a photograph in there. You know this oh, there it is on the back. Okay, this is Frank. Which one is Frank? 
Frank is the one on the far right. Can, can, okay. And these are his two friends. Um, I can't see their names. <laughs> okay. Okay, the friends are uh, Vic Santangelo on the left and Al McDonald in the center. What were their names again? Um, this is Frank Brown. Right. Here. This is uh, Al McDonald. I'm sorry, Vic. No, Al McDonald is in the center, yes, and Vic Santangelo here. Okay. All right, and this is also a photograph sent uh, with uh, Frank Brown with his brother. Billy, who uh, sent us the information on his shoulders. Okay. And that photograph was taken at Fort Niagara in 1941. Okay. Um, how long, uh, uh, how long of a period did you write letters, do you know? Yes, I from I'm going to say it must have been two or three years that we exchanged letters. And the uh, last letter that I had sent to him was dated uh, June the 3rd, 1944. Because I, I hadn't uh, heard from him for a while. And I kept writing to him nonetheless. And this, when it was returned to me, it was marked that he was deceased, June 26, 1944. How did you react to that news? I was very upset. And uh, I uh, did send a note to his parents. And uh, his mother had invited me to come down to, to Leroy to visit them. But my parents thought that I was too young to become too emotionally involved. Mm -hmm. And uh, I never did meet him nor his, his family. Okay, according to the information that his brother sent, uh, his parents, Jack and Nellie Brown, received a letter from Frank's friend, Al <laughs> McDonald, on Red Cross Stationery, which is in this folder excuse me, he have from them, in which he said he was recuperating from wounds he received in combat on June 8th, 1944, and he said that words cannot express my feelings and the recent loss of your son and my pal, and uh, the parents had not received anything. And uh, when they wrote a letter to the War Department, the War Department, in a telegram on July 6th, 1944, which is also included, said that Frank W. Brown was not on the casualty list and that there was a possibility he could be a prisoner of war. Um, William Brown said that there were a total of 23 letters written by Frank's mother to him between June 8th and August. 4th, 1944, all of which were returned stating that he was deceased. And finally, they received a telegram on August 6th, 1944, stating that Frank had been killed in action on the 13th of July um, in France. Uh, yet, um, I guess later accounts say that he actually died on the 8th of uh, June 1944, and the telegram said, in this action, Sergeant Brown displayed bravery and courage that is not found in the common man. It is indeed a thing to be remembered. Um, have you, you have stayed in contact with the family? Or you but established contact? We have established, established uh, contact with the family. In the, in the, Towards the end of 
year 2003, my husband and I were on a trip with our church to Leroy, and we had uh, stopped in at the Leroy Historical Museum, which is adjacent to the General Museum in Leroy, and uh, I began telling this woman about Frank, because in the meantime, I had uh, come up with, I had found the letters that I was saving, and it, this was after I retired, and I had a little bit of time, and I started th thinking about him a lot and wondering whatever happened to his family. So the woman in the uh, museum asked me if I would write that all down so they could keep that as part of their records, So I, which I did. And shortly after that, I received a call from a reporter in the Leroy Penny Saver who interviewed me over the phone. And I related the story to her. And then when the story ran in the Leroy paper, uh, a niece of Frank's had uh, read the story and was really excited about finding some connection to her uncle after him all these years, it was an uncle, of course, whom she had never met, and had uh, relayed the information to uh, William Brown. And he did contact me, and I sent him copies of all the letters that I had and any um, information that I had. And uh, since then, we've gotten together and uh, continued communication. And it's been a really uh, great experience for me and I know for him as well. Mm -hmm. Do you want to hold that up? Now where is Frank Brown buried? He said in the room. He's buried in St. Francis Cemetery in Leroy. And when my husband and I went down to uh, locate the grave, we looked and searched for probably a half hour, and it's not, the cemetery's not all that large, and we couldn't find it, couldn't find the grave so long. My husband was driving the car around, and I was walking out towards the entrance way, and as I was walking, there was a car came up uh, alongside me, and the woman in the car asked me if she could help, and I told her uh, who I was looking for, and uh, she says, oh, I know where that is. So she, she says, hop in. So I got in her car, and we drove back to the, more towards the rear of the cemetery. And as, as it turned out, that woman's family plot it was uh, right next to the Brown family. So she indeed took us right to the, to the grave site. Mm -hmm. And husband and I go back there regularly just to um, pay our respects and put some flowers on it. Now does he have a, a military stone? He does. On his grave? Yes. Mm -hmm. Is it a part of the cemetery that's not taken care of? Or is it oh just no, it's a waiting? really uh, well-maintained cemetery. Mm -hmm. okay. We just didn't know exactly okay, where didn't we were know. looking. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, Would you like to add anything else? Or? This was, uh, notice with with the same photo that was in I believe this is came from their um, church directory that indicating that he was the uh, first soldier who was killed from their parish in uh, World War II. And I know he did work at the Jello plant as well. And there's we did find a monument there at the um, Jello factory farm that uh, with the names of the people who had served during World War II and his is the only name of the star indicating that he had been killed. Mm -hmm. okay. All right, well thank you very much.